Hi guys, Ready Set RC, and today we are unboxing the Red Cat Kaiju. It, this is a 1/8 scale brushless electric 6S capable four wheel drive monster truck. It is ready to run. It has a Hobby Wing brushless motor in there. This is a four pole motor and it's waterproof. It is linked up to the Hobby Wing 6S brushless ESC. This is a 150 amp ESC. This is also waterproof and it's capable of 3S to 6S. We have front LED lights, rear LED lights, and an adjustable wheelie bar. What's included in the box is the Kaiju and a 2.4 gigahertz radio system. What you'll need to complete this RC is four AA batteries for the controller, LiPo batteries for the RC, and a battery charger. This RC takes either a single 3S, two 2S batteries for 4S, a single 4S, two 3S batteries for 6S, or a single 6S battery. It comes with 17 millimeter hexes all around. It has the tethered body clips, similar to what you would see on a lot of the Horizon Hobby slash armor vehicles. It has three sealed differentials on this, aluminum coil over shocks, which are threaded. You have a steel CVA axle with a captured joint and this Datsun-like shell. I think it's very cool, guys. I really do like the shell on this one. But let's get the Kaiju out of the box and let's see what it's all about. Here we are guys, Red Cat Kaiju out of the box. Let's go through the boring stuff first and then we'll go from the outside to the inside on this RC. First off, we have some Allen wrenches on this. We have a hex wrench for your wheels, stickers. And I actually like these stickers, guys. I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna put it on this, but I got some crawlers that I like to put these stickers on. And the owner's manual. Flipping through the owner's manual, guys, there's not much in here. And it's a pretty hefty manual. But you don't see anything like a blow, a full blowout of the RC, a uh, listing of the parts for the RC. Mainly just goes over some real rudimentary things in regards to the control of it. Radio guide, shutdown procedures. I mean, nothing really, nothing really crazy. I mean, I'm looking for, at this stage of the game, a owner's manual that kind of resembles what Traxxas gives you, what Arma gives you, what Losi gives you. And then we have the RCR2CE. Uh, very basic controller. I've had this on a, quite a few of my Red Cat vehicles. Uh, it takes four double A's. This is all plastic, so there's no, there's no foam grip here. The wheel is rubber. Um, it does the job guys just a basic controller. It has your steering trim your throttle trim your steering dual rate um, Throttle reverse steering reverse. Well, let's get into it guys the red cat kaiju This is what we really came here to see this thing looks amazing in person the wheels feel good I would have to say by looking at these wheels are somewhat of a low profile very soft not extremely soft, but soft enough where you're gonna get decent traction out on the gravelly and dirt surfaces. Like to see how these are gonna perform on a on-road setting, uh, but it, it feels good, guys. It really does feel good. I really do like the feel of these tires. Uh, as for the body, not gonna go into it. I think everyone has kind of beaten a dead horse by saying it looks like a Datsun, a Toyota. One of the same, I'm saying the same thing here. I do like the tethering body clips at this point. A lot of RC companies need to really start adapting this. I like this setup and I have to say this is, this is a nice touch by Red Cat. LED, two LEDs in the front, two more LEDs in the rear. Let's get this body off. I'm already getting a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, I'm already getting a little bit of rubbing here on the body, and I didn't even run this yet, guys, but I'm already getting, let me see if we can get that a little bit better. I'm already getting a little bit of rubbing out on the body over here, and I didn't even run this yet. It's only, the only thing that's happened is it's taken out of the box, but um, really like the finish. This reminds me a lot of my Big Rock Crew Cab, where it has a beautiful blue metallic with backed by silver. 
These guys did a pretty good job. We're gonna see how, how this holds up. Feels good in the hand. I mean, it definitely does feel good in the hand. Not brittle. I definitely will be backing this with some Gorilla Tape uh, just to support it a little bit because I do like this body. And there's some sharp corners on here and I can see that's where we are gonna get some tears on it, so. And that's just from abuse, not that the body's weak, but I know how I drive and usually my areas are like over here in the corners, another over here. Uh, so I'm gonna be backing this up with some Gorilla Tape just to reinforce that body, but it really does feel good in the hand and I like how they apply these stickers. A little bubbling, but that's a monster truck, guys. I'm not looking to do crawling with it. I'm not doing crawling competitions with it, but it looks good. So we have a very firm in the front. We'll have, to, we'll have to see how that absorbs hits on there. We have toe shackles in the front. We have the arm guards and shock shield here on the front arms. Also on the rear. The wheels on the wheelie bar feel very good. Uh, the, the wheelie bar has multiple adjustments that can be done to it. We have LED lights in the front and on the rear. We have a dust cover inside. I'm seeing camber and toe is adjustable in the front. Camber only in the rear. There are mounting locations in the front and rear for sway bars, but there are no sway bars on this truck. The shocks feel super plush. I mean, this, is, this feels really good. I'm gonna have to see how it performs, but they feel really good on here, guys. It looks like we have CVAs all around. So CVAs in the front, CVAs in the rear. Threaded metal coilover shocks with a plastic shock cap on this. The shock tower is also plastic on this as well. Multiple adjustments for your body mounts. Also multiple adjustments for your shocks. We have a 150 amp speed controller, a 2100 kV motor, a 25 kg servo. So we have a 48 tooth spur with a 10 tooth pinion. This is mod one gearing that is in this truck, guys. Coming off that ESC, we have a T-plug or Dean's connection, and they also provide you with the loop back to run it on a single battery. Looking at the battery compartment, it looks like a fairly decent size. My, my batteries that I'm gonna be running on here is gonna be a variation of two two S's or two three S's. I will try to run my Power Hobby batteries and my Gen's Ace batteries in here. My Gen's Aces, I did try to fit them and to get those in there, I had to remove this rear battery mount. Then it causes some issues or concerns with the battery sliding front and rear. But for me, I'm gonna see how that, that works. I'm most likely gonna change these connectors over to XT90s and I won't have that problem going forward because my Power Hobby batteries fit perfectly in here with the battery mount on the on the rear so i won't have a problem with those my gens ace so just just that you guys know those longer battery packs those longer flat battery packs you may have to take this battery mount out to get those in because those i did notice there, there is an issue but i want to run it first with the dean's connectors and those batteries do have that connection so i'm going to see how it performs first and then uh, as i do start to really run it hard uh, i'm going to remove the Deans and put XT90s on. In regards to the hubs and the, regards to the hubs and the carriers, they are plastic. There is no metal there. Center drive shaft is also metal, but it is completely encased from inside and from underneath the truck. The arms for an eight scale monster truck they feel about average. We'll have to see how they hold up. I am going to say that I will spray these up with some WD-40 before taking it out on the first bash. I think for the first run, I'm only going to do a rip and therefore I won't do anything to them. But after that first rip, I think I'm going to spray them up with, with some WD-40, get them all nice and pliable. Looking at the servo arm, that is also plastic on here. You do have access to the servo saver. Very easy to get to it. Let's get the Kaiju out on its first rip. Pretty good on the servo guys. Hopefully that's coming up on the camera. You can see that it's moving while at a standstill. 
on grass. Ho! Oh. This is running 6S. Oh! Oh, standing back flips. Let's try that again. Oh, 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 oh my God. I hope that's caught on camera. This is insane. Let's try that again. Oh, oh, six S guys. Why even play with anything less? Wheelies. Oh, oh, oh. It's a nut. Oh. guy garage had told me too he said it's a tree stomper and it is it loves the trees oh come on yes this up front throttle response is a little slow oh and it could definitely it could definitely need it needs a sway bar that would control a lot of those tippings oh ho ho I did not, and I repeat, I did not gorilla tape the body yet, and I'm probably gonna kick myself for not doing so. But you know what? It's a basher, and I wanna bash the hell out of it. I think this car's gonna, I think this truck's gonna look well. Woo, it's windy, guys, bad. And it's cold, that's why I'm not doing ramps today. It's below, well below 40 degrees. It's pushing close to like 36 out here today. That's 36 degrees Fahrenheit for my guys that are on the other side of the pond. I like it to hit above 40 before I start hitting ramps. But this thing's a, a serious nut on 6S. I'm not even able to hit full throttle, guys. I am strictly just doing half throttle. So when you're seeing it doing those bursts, even the wheelies, all that. Oh, took out my camera. All that is barely hitting half right off. Let's hit another standing backflip. Yep. Oh. Yep. Standing back for the days, guys. Wheels, wheels! Oh! Oh, yes! On the roll! Oh! 
Oh, I still messed it. Oh, that's me. I'm not hitting it strong enough. Sway bar is a must, guys. And 6S is insane. Does a lot of lean because of that, without that sway bar, You got a lot of lean with this. So a high traction area, you are gonna let a little bit of roll, but I feel, still feel a sway bar would help with it. And I'm not even driving quarter throttle. It's, this is probably quarter right here. It's just not big enough for, the area that I'm driving in is just not big enough for full throttle. Tippy, sway bar. Oh, but it's a stunt truck, guys. That's exactly what it is. For anybody that was questioning what is it, it's a stunt truck. Oh, I'm hoping all this is coming up on camera. Oh. Yeah, you're gonna see the bot the back of that body just flop around. And that's because of all that smashing I'm doing to the body. So the body post broke in the rear. And if you're doing it what I'm doing, and I said it's 36 degrees Fahrenheit out here. If you're driving around 36 degree Fahrenheit with your RCs and you expect something not to break, you are sadly mistaken. We're gonna to touch on the negatives and then we'll just roll right into the positives. And there's a lot more positives than there are negatives on this truck. We had a couple breaks on this. First, we broke a body mount. That happened on one of the times I flipped. Uh, as I said, I was very hard on this so I, and it's cold out, so I don't really fault the truck too much on this. And plus it's, it's, it's a little thin and there is a little bit of a weak point on here in regards to where the screw mounts to. We'll have to see if that happens another time, but I ordered one up and we're gonna see how that goes. And the second part, and I'm hoping you guys pick this up, no front bumper. Uh, so the front bumper also ripped off on this truck. And what happened with the front bumper, um, we, also, we also broke off the light. This was the one area that I did mention initially that it, you know, the, the, that the bumper was, was pretty rigid and there wasn't that much give in regards to the absorption of it. And it looks like that is the case because we definitely lost the front bumper on there. 
But for the most part, guys, this truck held up very well. For what I was putting this through, I like to get this thing out on the ramps next and, and see what it can do. But for what it was doing out there, it held up pretty well. It needs a sway bar. As you guys saw in the video, it does tend on high traction surfaces to kind of tip a little bit. And a sway bar would definitely stop that. Uh, I know you can lower the ride height a little. I didn't think that was a problem. I, I actually liked the height it was. And plus, until I hit the ramps, I don't want to adjust the ride height on this. But I think it could do with a sway bar on here. Just to kind of level it a little bit in regards to more high traction areas. Even on the, on the, the loose dirt, it did topple a little bit. Because it would just sway way too much. And a sway bar on this would be perfect. This truck's amazing. Um, as I said, it was extremely cold. It was about 36 degrees when I took this truck out. 36 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's way too cold. And that's probably part of it, but I did abuse the hell out of it in just doing rips on 6S. I know a lot of guys have been trying this out on 4S. <laughs> 6S is where it's at, guys. I mean, this thing was insane insane i i want to see what it's i mean i i will admit i want to see what it does on 4s but i really had a serious joy on my face running this on 6s and simply for the fact because of its size and the way that it is and the stance it's a stunt truck i love that it did backflips standing backflips this thing is going to be a nutball going off the ramps um, I may start it at that point at 4S and then work my way up to 6S, but I love it. I love it. And to be quite honest, I, I actually like how the body is getting trashed. It's really making it look like it has some kind of patina to it. I really like that it's, it's, it's abusing and it's looking nice on here. Um, you know, that's, that's just my thoughts on it. I really do like the scrapes and the rubs and everything, and it looks good. I, I like how it looks right now. I may maybe... I may never even watch wash this truck because I like how it looks dirty. But this thing handles well, performs well. It does need a sway bar, but outside of that, the servo is plenty fast. I was able to, and it's the servo is plenty fast, it's strong. I was able to turn the wheels at a standstill on grass, no issues. In regards to the power of this thing, this thing has insane amount of power. Uh, as I said, I want to try this on 4S, but for its stunt truck capabilities, 6S is where it's at. I do want to, as I said, I do want to see what it's like with the 4S battery in there, but I thought it was great. I may want to lower the, I may want to lower the wheelie bar on here. It, it, it suffice for what I was doing, but this thing, wheelies for days and as you guys saw in the video um, it's it's very hard to get it up to full throttle so i want as i said i want to see what it does on 4s 6s was like a insane truck insane truck but i want to see what it does on 4s because uh just like with the rival mt10 you can wheelie for days maybe way too easy on this and I just want to see what it does if I um, am able to get full throttle. I, throughout that video, maybe once I was able to get this thing up to full throttle. Outside of that, I'm like quarter throttle and half throttle throughout the entire video. The shocks performed well on this. The motor I did notice, and I didn't bring my temp gun because I just wanted to do a quick rip with this truck. I did notice when I got this truck back to the house, it is really warm, but it never cut out. I never got into any issues of the motor or ESC cutting out, but the motor was pretty warm when I got it back to the studio to do this part of the video. I ran this with the dust cover. That worked amazing. I will say the dust cover, I, I wish it was a little bit better in situating it on there. It's almost like you're trying to put a fitted cover on. It, it, you put one side and it starts to pull from the other, but that's minor. I mean, chances are I'm gonna run this without the dust cover anyway, but um, that's just my two cents on the dust cover. The body held up. I have probably one bend on here, but no breaks. You guys did see a slight rubbing that I had on the body before, but that was prior to receiving the truck. 
there are no cracks on the body, but I, as I said, I'm planning to reinforce this. I did not get a chance because I wanted to take the opportunity to get this truck out for this video, but I didn't get a chance to reinforce the body, but I do plan on doing so. Gorilla taped all inside. I do plan on WD-40, all of the arms on this. They held up with no issues, nothing broke. I wanna get a few more packs in this truck before I say exactly where I think this truck falls, but I, I will say guys, for my first run, I really did enjoy this. This thing was a joy to drive. Look forward to seeing more videos of this on 4S, definitely more videos on 6S, and you will see a final thoughts video on this truck. Here we are guys with the Red Cat Kaiju and the team associated rival MT-10. Just wanted to get this size comparison right out the bat for you guys. And you, you can see that they're not even the same size truck. If, if anything you wanna call it, you can say that this is a baby version of the Kaiju in size, but they're not the same truck. There, there is some similarities between the two, but they are clearly not the same vehicles when you see them side by side to them. There are some similarities where the bumpers, the way the chassis is configured, but from a size comparison and what they use in regards to electronics, they're not the same vehicles at all. I just wanted to give you guys a comparison between the two in regards to how they look and, and what the sizes are, but I'm just gonna show you some quick, some quick views of the two vehicles. As you guys can see, the chassis layouts are fairly similar, but if you look hard enough, they are not the same. Look towards the rear, the shock tower uh, placement is, and that space between the rear part of the body of, this, of the two vehicles, you will see that there is a significant difference in size and length of it. Also, what you have on the Red Cat Kaiju is these chassis braces on the rear and on the front of the truck. With wise, you guys can see, it's not close. I mean, there's a significant amount of difference from one vehicle to the next. It's, it's not even close, guys, based on the size between the two trucks. And you, can, you guys can see the difference between the two trucks. It is, the Kaiju is a bigger truck. When I originally saw the Kaiju came up and I saw the specs, this to me, when I saw the specs, fell more in line with the Arma Outcast and the Traxxas Max in size. Um, I do not have a Traxxas Max to compare this to, so that I, you know, that I cannot give you. But it did not. I did not see the correlation between the two in regards to sizes when I saw the first release. I didn't think this was even close because when I saw the specs of the Team Associated Rival MT10, it. Clearly, guys, now you can see it visually, it's clearly not even So there. you guys can see the Red Cat Kaiju, the Arma Outcast 4S. They, these are more fairly closer in size between the two vehicles. Uh, I have them now butted up. Uh, the Red Cat Kaiju is a little bit longer in length compared to the Arma Outcast 4S. Give you guys another perspective in regards to width. They are practically spot on. And that's what wheels and tires on. They are practically spot on when it comes to and width. Just to give you a better perspective in regards to the wheelbase difference, I like to look at the wheelbase difference between two trucks. And you can see it's fairly close between the Arma Outcast 4S and the Red Cat Kaiju. But that's it guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check us on Instagram for our latest post of the channel. This is Ready Set RC, signing out. Thanks again guys.